So welcome back. This is Maria. And this is Jessica. And, and I'm Courtney. And this is Courtney. <laughs> no, you're okay. You're okay. I was just going to say this is you're creeping me out. But we have a, um, a guest today. Her name is Courtney and she is from the podcast Haunts. Um, hey, so welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I've been kind of binging y'all's show over the last few weeks since I found you guys on Instagram, Yay! so I'm really excited. <laughs> I just started to listen to one of your shows today because we've been a house full of sick t- this week, so I haven't had a chance oh. to, but um, I'm really excited to listen to more of your podcast, but oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your podcast and all of that fun stuff. Yeah, um, so I kind of have like a weird upbringing in the paranormal, I guess, you could call it. I've always been like really into just like scary movies as well as ghost stories. But my dad has also just kind of instilled a love of like the paranormal and ghosts and and all that sort of like spiritual stuff in me, which has led me down this like spooky path as an adult. Um, but to be honest, I've always been sort of um, like skeptical, at least at heart. Um for sure believe in the paranormal. I've had too many experiences to not, but (laughs) I always try to find like some sort of um, like reasonable or logical, I guess, kind of explanation when I have an experience or if I hear a story. Um, I do, you know, give everyone the benefit of the doubt, but if there's like a way for me to kind of explain it with reason, um, I tend to lean towards that. And that's sort of what the podcast itself is. it's it's narrative style, so it's a bit more serious and not really, like, conversational. Um, but it always takes, like, a perspective of, I believe in this, but also yeah. at the same time, it's a lot more, um, you know, if there's some truth behind it. Like, if you listen to the, um, I want to say it's the Goldbrook Covered Bridge episode. It's my episode two. Um, mm-hmm. That story is apparently just, like, complete nonsense and <laughs> just kind of like lore within the city of um Stowe, Vermont. so i mean i tell the story from the perspective yeah. of this is you know the spooky covered bridge that this woman unfortunately passed away at blah 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 mm-hmm. but it turns out this woman like never actually existed and it's just like the town of Stowe is saying that that's the case which right. is super interesting to me just like how this kind of stuff comes to be so that's sort of the like in a nutshell what the show itself is if you want to give it a listen shameless plug um my handle on instagram (laughs) it's um hauntscast at hauntscast on instagram and in the in the bio there's links to where anywhere you want to go listen to it so um yeah that's that's the show uh pretty cool yeah that's a really interesting take (laughs) it's yeah i mean i feel like not a lot of people well i don't want to say not a lot of people because i know we all have some skepticism in us but a lot of podcasts and youtube channels and and even like documentaries on netflix lean more towards like and this happened and we have no idea why so right right right. hopefully it's refreshing but (laughs) i think so just just kind of hearing about it i was gonna say too like i um started to listen to one of your episodes about the i think i chose the ouija board history of the ouija board Mm -hmm. one because we had recently done one too about that. that Um, but yeah, to me, it's like the type of podcast that you do is more like a research paper every single time. Mm-hmm. And well, that also just brings my education. I'm a communications yeah. major. So oh, perfect. <laughs> unfortunately for me, that's just how I write, but <laughs> no, that's great. Cause I was going to say like, that's sort of how I originally thought that I would start this podcast mm-hmm. and I would do a lot of research and stuff. And that's how I kind of wanted it to be. But <laughs> no longer I thought about it. I was like, Honestly, like I do like research. I I like to look into stuff, but I was like, I just want to talk to people and I just want to like get everything that they've experienced and I want to hear it. But I mean, I love that part of the, um, that take on that podcast, on your podcast, because I don't really necessarily think that I could handle doing that much research for every episode. So I like to listen to those ones for sure, because, you know, other people, it's time consuming. It's really time consuming. (laughs) It's like hours upon hours, but also that's kind of what I do for fun. Like this past year, my husband and I were planning our wedding and it seemed like all of my time was just wedding planning, wedding planning, wedding planning. And it's like, which is for sure. Yeah. But it's like, where's 
all of my hobbies. Yeah. But, you know, so it's it's kind of now I feel like possibly an overcorrection, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> um, I will say, though, I envy podcasts like y'all's where it's just more conversational and you have somebody to bounce off of. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's two sides to every coin. There is. For sure. Oh, sorry, Jessica. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm no. I was just. I'm excited to listen to more podcasts. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. Well, I'm so, excited to listen to y'all guys. Y'all's more as well. It's. I've had a lot of fun just getting to know you know a ton of different yeah. podcasters, but y'all were probably the first that I connected with. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. No, I love like Instagram has been kind of like. I was a little nervous to connect with people at first, but mm-hmm. my gosh, like so many people. I like are just I was just like we we always text back and forth and I'm like we're funny let's just start a podcast <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean that's how it always like starts I used to I have yeah. I had a different podcast with um two of my really good friends back in Georgia and our schedules were so conflicting that it never really worked Work. out unfortunately yeah. but like that was our thought process it was like we're always talking about ghosts and true crime so why not do yeah. it in front of a microphone and see what happens that's where I, in my mind all of the best podcast start so (laughs) I love true crime too like I haven't done much on here yet but I plan to but true crime is a very interesting avenue for me I actually started listening to true crime podcasts before I listened to any like paranormal ones or anything like that so that's like where I found my love for it all but I just haven't gotten to it yet, but I plan to. <laughs> cool. Well, I will keep an eye out for it. Do you mind me asking, what is yeah. your favorite, like, true crime podcast? Oh, well, I'm going to have to say My Favorite Murder because okay. um, they had, like, they were my, like, my first true crime mm-hmm. podcast that I listened to was Serial. That's what got me hooked. Same, same, yeah. And then my sister introduced me to MFM, and I was like, I love this. This is amazing. So, (laughs) and then it's like a downhill spiral. Yep. Yep. And it just goes from there. Like, yep. (laughs) What's yours? Love morbid more than like, I probably should there. They've (laughs) unfortunately gone a little downhill. I'm not going to lie. But I have always enjoyed their podcast, but also recently I've been going back and listening to, this is probably unsurprising, but, and that's why we drink. If you guys have heard of that. I love that podcast. Yeah. Right. (laughs) So I I started, I want to say like two or three weeks ago, going back from the very beginning, because I've always just kind of checked in and here and there on the podcast. But um, those are like my two like mainstream podcasts that I listen to. But for the most part, it's like smaller, more indie podcast for obvious reasons. Like (laughs) for sure. Support the the small ones. Yeah. Um, I would say that. And that's why we drink was one of my favorite ones, too. I used to listen to them religiously, but I, and it's nothing against them. It's just, I, there's so many other podcasts that I just can't even keep up sometimes, but I do like them a lot. I will also say to their newer episodes are like three hours long and that's in my mind, kind of a commitment. (laughs) It is. Yes. Uh, If you're interested in a funny one, I don't know. I'm sure you've heard of it, but Mm -hmm. um, last podcast on the left, they are. I have. But I don't hilarious. think I've ever listened to them. To they're hilarious. Honest. They're ridiculous. <laughs> um, unhinged for sure. Mm-hmm. But they're really funny. <laughs> cool. Well, I might actually add that to my list. I feel like every once in a while I hear them come up, but I don't think I've ever yeah. actually taken the time to listen to them, which thinking they're about it now, that's place. like totally up my alley. So yeah. I probably should. But <laughs> Yeah, they do oh, true good. crime and paranormal supernatural mm-hmm. stuff. They're they're really funny for sure but sick yeah just which ones have you listened to I don't know I mean I think that I tend to listen to kind of serial related um, yeah podcasts Mm -hmm. I I like serial I like Dr. Death um oh yeah there's another one that I listened to that I can't remember the name of I was actually trying to think of the name of it I can't remember the name of S-Town it's called Ah, S-Town okay so they call I think I did serial, listen to that. It's like from the serial and um um from serial and this American oh, Life. Yes. Kind of like the same producers kind of did this sort of like personal journal type, you know, style of of podcast. And this was really interesting. I forgot. Um, I listened to that too. 
Yeah, so it was really interesting to kind of hear, like, it. it's kind of like, um, Courtney, your podcast, where it kind of, like, talks through, like, all these different things, and then mm-hmm. how the town has kind of, like, led like led thing like led the story down one path but then you find out it's something completely different and it's just it's so fascinating was that it's kind of like true crimey yeah it's more true crime Ooh. i think related than you know paranormal but yeah for sure that it's, came out i love that style a few years ago too wasn't it yeah i mean i, I feel like it it's was good like though 20, 2016 2017 is it like a season or like mm-hmm. several seasons Yep, I love podcasts like that. Season and there's, I feel like there's like ten episodes, and they're each like about an hour. Um, it was, it was, yeah, like, it was just like fascinating. It like gives you a little bit of a bite, you know, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I have to listen mm-hmm. to the next episode. And then it's just like crazier things just keep happening. It right. sucks you in. Okay, so it's seven episodes, each one about an hour. And if you haven't listened to it, I highly encourage you to listen to it because yeah. it was just, it, it was really sucks. Uh-huh. I for sure will. That sounds like it's, I mean, obviously, I have like a place in my heart for more serious, like just in depth knowledge based yeah. podcasts. Yeah. So I will definitely check that out probably once we're off of this call. That sounds really I, good. It it's is kind of, this one was interesting. Let me read you the um, kind of synopsis. It says, the story follows a man named John who despises his Alabama town and decides to do something about it. He asks Brian to investigate the son of a wealthy family who's allegedly been bragging that he got away with murder. But when someone else ends up dead, the search for the truth leads to a nasty feud, a hunt for hidden treasure, and an unearthing of the mysteries of one man's life. It's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Dude, yeah. This sounds like the podcast I wish I could have like if there was something weird going on actually there is something weird going on in my town I can do a little segue and tell you guys about it if you're interested but like okay so there's a legitimate cult in like Mm. the town that I live in um and which is like crazy because this is like a really really small town but they were like in the 90s a doomsday cult that is they're still active today but they're not like I think mainly now they just act more like a regular church, but they have bunkers like maybe like 25, 30 miles south of here, um, just on like a bunch of land, like right outside of um, Yellowstone National Park. And Mm -hmm. in the 90s, they had like, I want to say it was like a couple hundred people were down in those bunkers. Like the leader was like not holding them hostage, but like withholding information to think that they were um, like the world was about to end essentially. And then after, like, you know, two weeks, she was like, sorry, just kidding. Um, <laughs> you guys can go. <laughs> so, and it's like, I know people. Definitely holding hostage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, she was like, you can leave now. At least it wasn't like, you know, it could have obviously ended a lot worse, as we've seen with other, like, doomsday style cults. But, yeah, I, like, I know people who grew up in this cult, which I just think is, like, what? so nuts to me. Because, like moving here from out of state and then people being like yeah there's a there's a cult in your like little teeny town um and you know a bunch of people who used to be in it it's it's crazy but I don't think that there's anything like that hasn't already been uncovered otherwise I probably would do a deep dive on that um right but (laughs) it's basically just this lady was like that world is ending just kidding no it's not but finding that out was like a little bit nuts for me just like yeah. moving here randomly so a little but yeah long story <laughs> short that sounds like a podcast that I wish that I had the subject matter I guess to to do it on because mm-hmm. investigative like podcasts are really really cool but anyways yeah yeah that's I think that I enjoy that the most so mm-hmm. well same thing with serial that was oh, like yeah. the in my mind at least that I knew of the first like really investigative like right. show Exactly. It really was, like, the first podcast that was, like, mainstream, so. But I kind of wanted to um, get your background, Courtney, on your um, life in the paranormal and kind of yeah. your first, I guess, 
story that you can remember or encounter that you had? My first encounter. Mm. I feel like there's, I have so many <laughs> that I'm trying to think. It had to have been at some point, like when I was a kid. Um, oh, okay. This one is kind of tame, but my like childhood best friend, um, she also is like really into like ghost stories and paranormal and stuff like that. Um, when we were kids, her parents owned a beach house on Tybee Island, which is like, you know, part essentially of Savannah, which is incredibly haunted. And oh, yeah. that house was legitimately terrifying to an eight year old. There was two spirits that were two entities. One was a spirit. One I'm pretty sure was inhuman of some sorts. Um, there was like three stories. I want to say three ish stories. Um, the top floor was mainly just like a converted attic. But on the second floor, there was a guest bedroom that my parents always stayed in. And if you go into that room, turn the lights out and take pictures, you catch like a bunch of like orbs. Um, so she and I did that every time we were there, like far too often for <laughs> for two young children to do. But then we kind of stopped doing it after she had a really like scary experience Um there essentially she was staying the, like there by herself when she was I want to say like 16 um because like she like where she lived full time was an island close by so she was just popping over staying the weekend there and she was chased up the stairs by the more like inhuman entity essentially so she calls me crying and I'm like what's your what like what's wrong like this yeah. is <laughs> intense and she's like I hear it outside of the room that like she and I shared every time we were there it was like her bedroom but every time that she was there essentially I was um and it was like the one time she was there by herself she's like being chased up the stairs all the way from the first floor to the third floor and she was like I hear it pacing outside of the room and I like I don't know what to do so essentially mm -hmm. we had to get her dad to drive there it was a whole thing. So it's kind oh. of both of our stories, but my first like encounter was mainly just when we were really, really young going into that second floor bedroom and taking pictures. I wonder if she still has those because yeah. I might text her and see if she does. I doubt it because it was like, you know, a decade ago at this point, but mm -hmm. um, or even longer than that, probably almost 20 years. But yeah, that was that house was <laughs> intense. To say the least. But, yeah. I will say that I think as a child, do you ever remember, I, Jessica, I think that you had sent me a meme about this recently, actually, about running, like, for me, at least, in the house I grew up in, it was the basement. Every time I walked up those basement stairs, the like, you had to turn the light off, and then you had to run upstairs. Right. <laughs> because something was going to chase you up the stairs. That's the feeling I get. Ugh, I don't like that. Yeah. I mean... Like, it's funny you should say that because I referenced that in a, like, future episode. I've already recorded it. But it's it's the concept of there's always, it always feels like there's something ready to play chase with you mm -hmm. as you're running up the stairs. Even now as an adult, I live on, like, my house is a one-story house, but we have a loft. Um, and when I, like, climb those stairs to, like, go up to the loft, it's, like, yeah. what is a it race <laughs> against nothing. <laughs> yeah. So I feel the same way. I, like even in this house, which I'm not scared in this house, hardly ever. Mm -hmm. I get like uneasy, but I don't know if that's just me. I don't think this house is like haunted or anything, but right. I, my basement is, I have to go down there to let the dog out. I have to go down there to do laundry and whatever. Um, so every time I come up the stairs, I run. Like, I think it's just ingrained in me that you have to run up the basement stairs. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also, too, I think that the reason why I'm so scared of basements is because of, not that I scare easy, I don't think that that's, like, the right word, probably, like, just uneasy around them is because yeah. of Paranormal Activity, the second movie, when they, like, drag the woman down the stairs. Oh, see, I haven't seen that one. Listen, don't. I mean, it's a good <laughs> movie for, for what it is. I mean, I would say it's worth the watch once mm -hmm. if you are, like, looking for a good jump scare, but, yeah, yeah it's, like... <laughs> it like drags one of the main characters down into like the basement and locks her there. And I just, I can't <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Traumatizing. Like, my worst fear. Don't touch my feet. And it happens like yeah. when she's sleeping oh, to spoil the whole no. movie, but Oh God, I hate it. <laughs> no. I don't 
all my things. Like when your feet I... hang out of the blanket on your bed. No. Nope. It's like that other <laughs> meme where it's like, <laughs> you're 100% safe from the boogeyman if your feet are in the, <laughs> in in the blanket. Oh, my gosh. Great. I can't wait for tonight when I'm like <laughs> no, right. covering my feet with three blankets. <laughs> <laughs> just basically like really tuck yourself in there yeah. like it'll be fine <laughs> just, just tuck. completely tucked in yeah no I hate ba- I hate basements too I I will always run up the stairs um I've house sat for people and in all of those circumstances they mm-hmm. all had basements I never personally had a basement as a kid or a teenager um and I still to this day will run up the stairs because basements freak me out Mm-hmm. Um, Maria, your um, like basement area, like even at the top yeah. of the stairs, freaks me out. In that little hey, corner, yeah. yeah, in the little corner, it's scary. It's, well, it's because it's dark in that corner. Like there's yeah. not a light there. Yeah. So yeah. Ooh. I don't know. There's something about basements. There was one time when I was in high school and I was I had a friend sleepover, and mm-hmm. I woke up like the following morning after like our sleepover party or whatever you want to call it, and we slept in the <laughs> basement. And she was like, why was your mom in here last night with a police officer? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, that did not, you were dreaming. We go upstairs for breakfast, and my mom was like, so, um, there was, the police came last night, and <laughs> I was like, what? Why? <laughs> Apparently, like, the alarm went off where, like, our downstairs, like, the back door, which is the one that's in the basement, um, had been opened, so the police were called and, like, came to my parents' house, but they there was no sign of intrusion or anything oh my like that. God. My mom's like, it was probably the wind, but my dad, being my dad, was like, it's a ghost. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, are we sure no one was trying to break in and snatch us? I'm, like, the only one who's, like, concerned about, like, real-life human, human right. beings. Right, like, and not being just an intruder, like, an actual person, <laughs> or not being like, just a ghost, like, an actual person. <laughs> Right. I'm. I, how easy would it be if someone comes into our backyard? Like, of course it's fenced in, but like it's one of those fences where you can just like open the gate and yeah. just mm. walk right in, and it's right there. It's a path right to the back door. So, I'm like, okay, wouldn't it make sense that someone comes to the back door, tries to open it, the right. alarms go off, and they sprint off? They're not gonna stick around. Like, yeah. right, mom, <laughs> someone could have taken me. Oh my goodness. I've said this before, but. I am, like, honestly more afraid of humans than I am of spirits or ghosts or anything. I feel like that's why I have to, like, take a break from, from, like, true crime podcasts every, got several, like, (laughs) every several months because it's, especially if I'm here alone, I can't handle the idea. You gotta listen to funny, watch funny stuff. That's how I am, at least. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I'm still that person who, like, if I listen to something or watch something scary, I have to watch something um, comedy after work, something that will make me laugh because it, yeah. And I agree, Maria. I think that people scare me more than Uh ghosts and paranormal, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, they say that, like, spirits can't, like, I don't know how true this is, but, like, they can physically harm you, but they can't, like... Right how do I say this, like, delicately? They can't, like, end things for you. you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I get scared to say, even though I ha- you end up having to say it, obviously, with a paranormal podcast, right. but I'm always so hesitant because Google and just algorithms can be so weird, but... It's true. Uh, kind of a long one. I wrote notes about... Um, I think I mentioned it to you, Maria, over... Yeah. Week, just, like, kind of connected. Have you guys heard, I'm assuming, The Bell Witch... I've heard. I don't know any. I don't think I know much about it. Okay. I think I've, I'm a little bit. I don't. I don't know. I think I've heard it, but I'm not sure of like the full story. Okay. I'm gonna give like a brief yeah. overview of like the actual haunting itself, because really and truly, you guys should should look into it and like dedicate a full episode on it. It's one of the most insane stories I've ever heard. It's about a poltergeist from like the 18. Hold on. Like I said, I have notes. My apologies <laughs> if you hear um oh no, it's fine. Papers ruffling, but basically, it's a poltergeist from like the it haunted this family in between 1817 and 1821 um on a property in like a really small town outside of Nashville. It's called Adams, Tennessee. Um 
the owner of this property, his name was John Bell, and he lived there as like a farmer with his family for like decades. And at some point, his family, I want to say, was like cursed by their neighbor. I couldn't find the exact reason, but basically they were haunted by this super, super violent um, like spirit. Like I'm, I'm saying like people were being slapped and like it was it had the like just sheer power to be able to like say scripture to them, which if you're like an inhuman entity, like that's obvious for obvious reasons, really difficult. So like, I want to say too, that it may have um, poisoned John Bell. I can't remember. It poisoned somebody Mm -hmm. and they got better, but that one of their like family pets ended up like ingesting the poison as well. And they passed away like this, like, the spirit in and of itself was like super just like very aggressive obviously and the the property itself i want to say was like maybe just over 100 acres and today it's split into two parts like two parcels the first one is like where the family actually lived um their the original cabin is there and it's closed to the public it's just like a private property but the like main like attraction i guess the second half of the property is open to the public and it has a cave on the property where you can go and visit and take tours um and my husband and i did that before we were married um and i want to say it was 2019 we went to we basically drove across the country we wanted to go see montana which is where i live today just to kind of feel it out we had intentions of moving here to a different town Along the way, my husband is, like, super not into the paranormal, very skeptical. Um, (laughs) We make (laughs) quite the pair. (laughs) Even though I will say in, like, today, he is, because of what happened to us here, he's a lot more open to the idea of of possibly maybe there is something else beyond just, like, life and death, essentially. Mm -hmm. So on this trip, I'm like, Todd, let's go to every haunted location along the way. I want to do like a paranormal tour of the United States, essentially. And he's like, whatever, as long as I don't have to plan it. (laughs) Like, (laughs) like, you do all of the booking and I will get in the car and drive. And I'm like, great. So this happened shortly after I graduated college. Um, I want to say it was like August of 2019. First, literally the first stop that we go to is this like haunted like property essentially it's called the bell witch cave um we get out we buy our tickets and we just like go out into the cave um and like todd is being super respectful he always is really respectful of like me believing in this and stuff like that and on the off chance of like something otherworldly is there that he doesn't know about (laughs) he's like i don't want to disrespect or speak ill of the dead or anything like that so he's being respectful but the entire time i can tell that like he's not really buying it especially because on the way there i showed him a podcast about i think it was actually a morbid episode or maybe and that's why we drink they've both covered it Mm -hmm. um but we were listening to it and he's like the entire time like okay yeah sure (laughs) so we get there And I'm like, all right, I'm going to, like, test my boundaries, which is really stupid when you're at a haunted location. And heed my warning, if you ever go here, do not do what I did. Um, (laughs) There is a rumor that if you are to take something from this property, you're going to be cursed by this entity. Um, (laughs) So we walk into the cave, and the woman is, like, telling us the story about the Bell family and, like, how this haunting came to be and I like squat down pick up a rock put it in my pocket she catches me and she's like hey I'm not gonna stop you we have people do it all the time I understand that you might be here for the thrills but just so you're aware I'm supposed to warn you that people have like gotten into car accidents people have gotten divorced people have been hospitalized like Mm -mm. proceed at your own risk so I'm like okay but also I've been doing like paranormal investigations paranormal research for years and on top of that as a kid I had like countless experiences so I in my mind I'm like I can handle it yeah which is so arrogant and again that's (laughs) such a like I shouldn't have done that and looking back now I wish I hadn't 
mm-hmm. but it does lead to a, a good story. So <laughs> we, a story out of it. So <laughs> I know at least I can like tell you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell people about it, I guess. I don't I mean, at the very least I can say, at least in my perspective, that the curse is real and I can warn people to not do what mm-hmm. I did. But we end up leaving. I kept the rock. It was basically like a little like tiny pebble. Like you you wouldn't think that it would be that big of a deal. But um, we go to our next stop, which is Paducah, Kentucky. Um, the entire time my husband, but he was my boyfriend at the time, was driving up until this point. And it was in his like dad's big like monster truck of a Ford Expedition. And I oh. at the time was driving a Toyota Camry. So <laughs> it's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge difference. But we get to Paducah, Kentucky. He has family there. So we spend some time with his like great aunt and uncle. Um, and then when we leave, it's my turn for the very first time ever to drive a, a car that big, first of all, but also it's his dad's and I'm not on the insurance. So I'm a little nervous. And we get in the car, we drive like maybe like five minutes down the road. We're not even on the interstate yet. And like this huge storm rolls in and like within seconds, our car is struck by lightning. <gasps> like, yeah, it, it was like literally <laughs> like that is not where I thought this. No, was I mean, like, I didn't think that that would be something that I ever would have encountered. And it's like, well, I'm telling like you, that is like not. It's normally ha- that doesn't normally happen no it's I mean the odds of it happening are like astronomical and yeah. I think like as we'll see like towards the end of this it's like it, it, the whole thing just gets in my mind blown out of proportion for like a pebble but again right. I was <laughs> don't do what I did <laughs> um, we, it, it honestly it really felt like the entire car like shook and like the electronics were like it was like actually like a movie and I just remember like feeling it in my back and being like what was that and I look at Todd and he's like I think we were just struck by lightning oh my god and I'm like the first time within the first 10 minutes of me driving this giant car that doesn't belong to me we're being struck by lightning and I'm just like shocked but all you can do is keep going so I kept driving and it just seemed like for the next like 12 or so hours it just like we kept getting delayed getting delayed getting delayed there was a uh, after the storm like a really thick fog so I couldn't like see anything our Perfect. maps were like messing up so we kept like getting lost and stuff and it was to the point where we I don't think got to the hotel that we were supposed to be staying at which was another haunted location I want to say it was after 3 30 in the morning and it's in this like little tiny town in like the middle of nowhere Kansas mm-hmm. so this hotel didn't have like a 24 hour service desk to check right, in. Right. You had to check in by 10 PM. I didn't know that because I've never at the time experienced rural life. Now I live in the middle of nowhere, but <laughs> back then I was like, why would this be like a thing? So there's like a like sign on the door saying you have to call our emergency number to like check in if you get here after 10. So I felt like such like a, like a jerk. Cause I had yeah. to call and have this poor person come up and, check us into the hotel just so we can sleep for four hours um and then we you know get up the next day all seems well like we didn't have any experiences in the hotel probably because we were just so tired and right I mean you got you know you can never you can never like force anything to like you know you can't you can't force paranormal activity but we get up the next day and I'm still like a little (laughs) shaken by the experience um (laughs) As you should be. <laughs> right. I mean, like, we were struck by lightning. Who who can say that? <laughs> and, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> say that you're, like, fine. But we go about, like, the rest of the, like, that day's drive without incident. The next day after that, we get up and we drive to Billings. And Billings is where um, my husband and I had always thought we were going to, like, settle down and and live just because there was a lot of work for him at the time that we at that time now not so much but at the time we're like this is probably where we're going to live so we may want to just spend a couple days here and explore we get there and that first night we both get like violently ill like sicker than I think I've probably ever been um 
I'll like obviously spare you the details, but like <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, I had COVID in 2021. So it was like the, I don't remember what variant it was, but that was no picnic. And still, I would say the what, like how sick I was in Billings was like the worst that I've ever been. Like, it was just like, I don't, I don't know. It was very just sudden and it was weird that it was yeah. both of us, but you know, to get play devil's advocate here, we could have just like had food poisoning mm-hmm. um, or something like that. Cause it was just have. very, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just Under a lot of like circumstances. Yeah, just a lot of really bad luck on a trip that was supposed to be, you know, really fun for us. And it was like a graduation present to myself. So mm-hmm. it was unfortunate. But so it was basically we were in Billings for what three days? Mm-hmm. And like the entire time we were both sick, but we only had this Airbnb that we were staying at for those three days. We couldn't stay any longer until we got better. So basically, we just had to get in the car and leave. And I mean, like, the second that we left the city lines, like, crossed over the city lines, we started feeling better. And I'm just like, seriously, like, why, like, why couldn't you just waited, like, you know, a few more hours? It's it's really weird, because, like, it just prevented us from being able to walk around and, like, see, like, the city. And I mean... It all works out. We didn't end up moving there, probably because we had such a bad experience. <laughs> but, like, it just, it, it felt almost targeted. It was very weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we, you know, continue on our trip. We end up going up to Glacier National Park, and we stayed there for a couple of days. And, you know, nothing really happened weird. But on the way back, and this is where it gets, like, even scarier, um, we get hungry like around like southwest montana so like if you come down like the state on our like one interstate um it's like right here if like this is like the whole state it's towards you know the southwest corner um and it's you know a little bit further west than where we were in billings and we're both like hey we're kind of in the middle of like plains country let's just stop to fill up on gas and get like lunch at the next exit that has options so we come up on this town and like i it it is like a beautiful area there's like mountains surrounding us but like other than that it's pretty unremarkable in in terms of a town um we get off the exit there's like a grocery store a mcdonald's a pizza joint a gas station um so we stop to get gas and todd's like hey i want to get pizza i don't really like mcdonald's which Mm -hmm. like you know he doesn't so he's like i'm just gonna walk over to this takeout pizza joint get a pizza while you go and get mcdonald's so i'm like okay sounds good i go inside and i'm waiting in line to order my food when lightning strikes in the parking lot i like i can't i make this up like i feel like crazy saying it but it's like wow. you can ask literally anybody i know like this is a thing that we both experienced so oh, we my god <laughs> it strikes in the parking lot and i'm sitting there like this cannot get any weirder for me it it like literally shuts the power off in this mcdonald's they give me my food for free because they're like you know sorry I you're charge you. <laughs> i can't charge you for this but like you came and like there's not a lot of takeout like fast food restaurants close by like I mean it's like a bona fide town but Mm -hmm. in terms of like for travelers it's basically this McDonald's so um I'm like okay sorry my dog just like howled out there I don't know if y'all heard that but (laughs) (laughs) we I get my food and I leave the McDonald's because I told him I was going to meet Todd back at the car and he's sitting there (laughs) in in the passenger seat of the expedition and I get in and I'm like are you okay <laughs> and he was like that lightning struck probably like 25 feet away from where I was standing like it almost struck him which to say oh, that we yeah. were struck by lightning in the car once was astronomical in terms of right. like variables the, odds, the probability of that happening yeah. are very low I'm pretty sure so well I mean it's like we should get like we should have gone across the street to the gas station, or not the gas station, but the grocery store and bought a lottery ticket. Yeah. You should have. We didn't, because, like, all we wanted to do was leave. But but it was, like, 
We was it storming? To... No. Or was it? Oh my god. It was like no. I mean, it was like years ago Bobby. at this point. So I guess it could have. <laughs> it wasn't raining though. Like maybe a storm was rolling in, but you also have to think. Montana, just as, like, a state, we don't get a lot of thunderstorms. It's not like yeah. it was when we lived in Georgia, where every day in the spring, it was, and summer, thunderstorm. So, mm -hmm. like, in the two years almost that I've lived here, I think we've had, like, maybe two thunderstorms yeah. that what? I've experienced. Yeah. It's just wow. really dry here. I mean, it rains, but, like, yeah. and last year, like, obviously the Yellowstone flooded, but it wasn't a thunderstorm. Right. So, it was just odd. But other than that, we ended up driving the rest of the way home. Long story short, nothing else happened at that point. I ended up sending the rock back because I was like, I don't <laughs> want this anymore. Yeah. And, and if you go to the Bell Witch Cave, you can see like letters upon letters of like people apologizing for, you know, taking a rock or taking like a stick or something. Because again, like, You've been warned. They literally warn yeah. you during the tour. I'm sure they have one person every tour who thinks that they can handle it or doesn't know any better. Um, but that's not where the story ends. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> but I, mm, there's more. Um, so we ended up moving here in, well, I say here, in, to a bigger town a little bit further west of us um, mm -hmm. in, what was it, March 2021. And we started renting a house because we weren't sure exactly where we wanted to buy. Um, and just as like for some contextual background, Montana notoriously is just like impossible to find housing. Mm -hmm. Like I know that there's like a housing crisis everywhere, but people are getting turned out of like the houses that they've been renting for years wow. to like just be like homeless on the oh, street. Essentially. It's and it's like freezing here. So that's fun. But yeah. um, we were renting this house in towards like the fall we get like kind of a weird message from our like landlord saying like hey I'm thinking about selling this house so don't plan to re-sign your lease mm -hmm. and we were like okay great because we've started a career here we've started like you know our lives together here we were recently engaged like we don't want to move back to Georgia after all of the things that we've like sacrificed essentially to get here so we start looking for different places to to live. Um, and we come across the house that I'm in now. Um, it's on 14 acres. It's one bed, two bath, or no, two bed, one bath. It's essentially like everything we've ever wanted, but we don't really know much about the town. I won't say what it is for obvious reasons, but I can let right. you guys know after <laughs> if y'all are curious. Um, we contact the realtor and we're like, hey, we're really interested in this house. This is, you know, we've been pre-approved. Can we go see it? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So we meet her at her office in the town that we were currently living in and she drives us over and we get off the exit and things are starting to look familiar. And I look at Todd and I'm like, hey, do you recognize this McDonald's? Aww. And he was like, oh, and we were both kind of like, do we even want to go look at this house now? Because it's yeah. the same exit, oh, same yeah. town. And, like, bear yeah. in mind, at the time, we didn't know anything about, right. like, yeah. that area of Montana. Because we had been researching so much about right. Billings. And so we were just kind of like, okay, let's go with it. Because we really don't have another choice. Because we are about to get kicked out of the house that we live in. Mm -hmm. Not like, I'm sure we would have, we had enough time. But, like, it was so hard to find even a rental right. that... Yeah. And then on top of that, the property values were just skyrocketing. And even now this house, like the the property value has increased, like, I think probably like five times what we bought it for. Like, it is insane. But also it kind of felt like, God, it knows where we live. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> that essentially is like the end of like all of the weird paranormal activity. But I will say when this like entity was haunting the bell family back in the 1820s she like left kind of abruptly and was like i will be back in seven years to check in on the family and she allegedly familiar. yeah she no, allegedly comes it. back every seven years and this 2023 is the seventh year in that cycle <laughs> so <laughs> but you sent the rock back right I did, but I mean, I've also had some really bad luck recently, so really? I don't want to say that it's, like, paranormal. I think it's just, like, living in an old house. Yeah. Um, 
but it's just it's weird because it's like you think that you're fine and you're not I don't know I mean I can get into it if you guys want to but it's it's like it started I I would say probably it was literally like the night like New Year's Eve and I'm sorry this is kind of a buzzkill but I had a childhood friend like pass away uh it, it was just very sudden they don't know what happened and then, like, the week after that, my dog had to go to the ER. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. So it was, like, that was weird. Like, people that I care about and, like, living beings that I care about are in harm's right. way. Um, and then the following week, we had a chimney fire. And it was... Oh, my gosh. And, I mean, it was... We literally noticed, like, immediately what was happening and put it out. But it was just, like, wow, what if we weren't on that? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know... The only other thing that's like really happened was I had um like pipes freeze here in the bathroom and like that's fine now but it's just been like a weird series of unfortunate events literally from like midnight wow. like like Day. immediately upon New Year's Day. That's so it's, it's like I know that where I'm coming from also sounds like crazy and I've it does tried to like obviously because I I try to be skeptical mm-hmm. whenever I can be and. Yeah. Maybe I've, like, the way that I've justified it in the past is, like, maybe I have, was expecting to be cursed, so mm-hmm. it created a self-fulfilling prophecy. But also, I can't control lightning. Yeah. No. So, I don't know. But that was- and also, the chances of you experiencing the same locations, and, like, that's wild. The synchronicities, yeah. yeah, with that it's, are just it's scary. too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hard to explain. It would be one thing if, like, we were... Like the car was struck by lightning and that was it. Yeah. I'd be like, right. <laughs> Once. Like crazy coincidence. Yeah. You know? But it was twice. And one of them, it like she literally predicted, or I should say, it r- literally predicted where we were going to live. Yeah. And like it knows where we live. Wow. So, so I want to ask you something. So okay. while you were in that, like, after you had been struck by lightning once, you, you, you know, maybe you got sick. What did you ever like when, when at one point did you say, okay, this has to be because of the pebble I took. (laughs) I want to say, were you conscious of that? I think that honestly, Todd made like a joke right Uh when we got struck by lightning the first time, like when the car (laughs) got struck by lightning, he was like, Oh, it must've been the rock you took. But I was like, (laughs) okay, fat chance. Like, and then I kind of started like coming to terms with it when we were in like at the gas station, McDonald's sort of situation. And just to be clear, the McDonald's and the gas station were separate. Um, (laughs) Just because (laughs) McDonald's by itself is like, yeah. Unfortunately, I do really like it. I will say I eat. I, I ate at that same McDonald's last night. <laughs> We're not but... <laughs> fans, so <laughs> we love but... McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I do. I don't know if Jessica does, it's... but I do. <laughs> it's Nuggets are pleasure. fantastic. It's <sighs> my guilty pleasure. I mean, I literally Maybe. was like writing all of this down. I didn't even use any of these notes, but at least I organized <laughs> my thoughts. I guess. Right. Um, I was writing all of that down last night, and um. I was working remote and Todd was coming in from the office and when he gets home, he's like, what do you want for dinner? And I'm like, I don't know what you're eating, but I'm going to get McDonald's because <laughs> <laughs> I need to go revisit the location. <laughs> but, so you went to that McDonald's? Yeah. I eat there oh probably gosh. like twice a month, oh my which is just like when you, when I'm there and I'm just like in the drive through, I'm like, whatever, I'm just getting McDonald's. But like when, like last night I was waiting in line and it was like, negative 17 degrees outside I'm not even kidding and I'm just like this is like such a weird like life is so weird yeah because this is probably like the spot where I had like one of the scariest experiences paranormal or otherwise yeah and I'm just here here. chilling like waiting for nugs while like it's freezing out Exactly. (laughs) exactly oh my gosh that reminds me of um have you heard of Robert the doll uh yeah I'm actually researching him right now for oh really yeah (laughs) that reminds me of that because people say Mm -hmm. when they go to visit him if you take a picture with him you have to ask for permission otherwise the same type of thing it's like a curse it's a curse but and then like the other thing that's weird about Robert (laughs) while we're on the topic because I have yeah he's like fresh on my mind fresh on your mind (laughs) (laughs) unfortunately um (laughs) you have to ask for permission 
but he you have to get his permission and he can say no right. or yes right but he has no way of telling you that unless you're like clear audience or something right so, so just don't do it basically in my mind i don't i, I don't know i want to go see the doll and everything but <laughs> i there there's some parts of me where i'm like this can't be true it has to be like some sort of like cuz they say that um robert otto like his owner or gene otto um was for obvious reasons a bit eccentric so i'm mm-hmm. wondering if like maybe you know he created this story or so i don't i don't know but there's also a part of me where it's like so many people have had this like weird experience with him where they it's like they get into a plane crash or a yeah. car accident or you know they get terminally ill or 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 they get have a divorce or something like that where it's like something there has to be true but i don't know don't take a picture of him don't take a rock from that cave (laughs) where is he located this doll uh key west West. oh wow okay Mm -hmm. which i want to go to key west not for robert the doll but i do want to go there (laughs) key west is actually like a really like just beautiful place but also at the same time like super haunted so it's like that's what i hear i i've been there like a lot as a kid never as an adult and i'd love to go back now that i'm like able to understand right i've never been Uh, to florida period so well it's i will say it's kind of a crazy place but um (laughs) it is crazy (laughs) from what i hear i would have to agree (laughs) yeah i mean i'm not um a huge like summer person uh Mm -hmm. i don't like warm weather all that much for like obviously i live where i live for a reason (laughs) but (laughs) but like i don't know the keys are really cool they're really cool and they have a lot like just florida in general has a lot of history but um i like to say that i'm allergic to it just because it's always so hot and humid there oh yeah you know so you said so you're from savannah is that what you said so i'm from um like a little town outside of Atlanta oh Uh, okay my friend who the one who had that like weird experience and has like the haunted house she she and I both actually grew up in Augusta Georgia and then moved during our early childhood but that's where we like cemented our friendship and um but they moved to an island close by to that but we we, like Savannah was like the halfway point so once we were able to drive in our older years we were able to like meet there so I spent a lot of time in Savannah but I've never lived there my brother has for school but not I unfortunately I that's another place I want to go because of its haunted history mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's on um, bucket list it's I will say intense like there was one time my brother called me and he was walking home from class he went to SCAD um and he was like I think something's following me and I'm like something or someone and he's like something Ooh. I hear footsteps behind me and they keep coming closer when I stop and I turn around and no one is there. Oh my god. And I'm like, dog, you gotta move. Like, <laughs> like the fact that that is your A just regular occurrence. experience yeah. walking home from class is frightening. <laughs> Especially because he doesn't like this at all, which is why he called yeah. me like freaking out. Cause I'm the one who's like, get this beer box. But yep, yep. <laughs> that would be me. Like, figure out who it is. <laughs> Leslie, they need help. <laughs> we'll help them. Why are you being shy? Yeah. And he's like, because it's not a real person. <laughs> right. But I mean, it is, yeah. but not in the sense that like you and I are. But you right. know. But yeah, yeah. I I still feel like I'm not embarrassed, but hesitant to tell people that um, my inter- like how interested I am and fascinated by mm-hmm. the paranormal. Just because it to some people it is so like outlandish to them, they just can't even wrap yeah. their heads around it. Like that's no, like, there's no way that that's real. So right, um, the idea that like number one that it is real, and number two that someone could have like the way that people who don't believe in it as much as I do have kind of explained it is like a morbid curiosity. Same. Like why do you care so much about like? what happens after that and it's also kind of like I don't I feel like it's almost like stereotyped against in a way but um, I agree yeah yeah it's unfortunate but at least the people who I are in it I feel like are like really cool people so I agree 
I, I think it's a really like... oh sorry go ahead Jessica no you go ahead <laughs> I was just gonna say I feel like um everybody that I have met just from doing this podcast for I don't even know how long we've been doing it now not very long but I feel like I've connected with a lot of really cool interesting people mm-hmm. and it like makes on days where I feel like why am I doing this podcast it makes me feel like I could I should keep doing it so. right well, no one says how much, like, work a podcast is. Yeah. No, nobody does. <laughs> it's really interesting to me, you know, when you kind of think about maybe people who are completely skeptical and they're like, absolutely not, this can't possibly be the case. Um, and people who are open, I mean, people who are open to this sort of thing and, like, interested in it, fascinated by it, just, I feel like they have like a whole other perspective where it's like, okay, I've opened my mind to the possibility that life isn't static or the the world that we live in isn't, you know, a static thing where it's like either black and white. There, there's like no gray in there. And it's like, you know, you kind of have to like, I don't know, that to me makes more sense as far as like, there's gray, there's gray in everything. Mm-hmm. Why, why, you know, why would we live in a place where everything is black and white when there's so much that we don't understand? Mm-hmm. So anyway, it just, I feel like, I feel like kind of opening our mind to, you know, what's out there, what's possible is just so much, I don't know. It feels a little bit more um, accepting and understanding. To yeah. Me. I, why not? You know? Right. But, I also think it's very, um, and I understand there's like a fear to it because yeah. we don't, we don't truly know like what happens beyond this, you know, like there's no, there's no way to know until it's your time. But I also think it's, it's very close minded to assume that there is nothing. Mm -hmm. And I, and I know a lot of people do and, and to each their own, but I just can't wrap my head around what that feels like, because I've always just thought like, maybe I don't have all the answers, but I feel like there has to be something other than, just this even if it's just like reincarnating yeah that's like because I grew up Catholic so obviously they teach you about you know heaven and hell and all of that and Mm -hmm. you know the older I got I was like "Eh, I don't really believe in like the whole hell thing because that just doesn't make sense to me but um you know it just there to me I, I and I still sometimes feel this way. It's like I am afraid to die because mm-hmm. you don't know for sure. But these stories and these like just talking to people and um there is a podcast that I listen to called Psychic Teachers. They're another really big influence mm-hmm. on me. They're just these two women, they're amazing. Um one's a older pagan and the other and her friend co-host is a Catholic psychic medium. I mean, they're just That's such an interesting the most, yes, the combination. Amazing. That's really cool. And they have really shifted my perspective on a lot of things because I do I am more um yes, I was raised Catholic, but I do identify a lot more with the pagan side of things. Same. And so to hear them talk about stuff like that is really like makes me feel like it's okay to have that Catholic background and to be raised on thinking one thing, but it's also like a good mix, I think is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's still like crazy to me, but hearing those stories and like being, it's almost like a reassurance that it might not be heaven, but it is something. So yeah, it's comforting. And it's also too, it's like the idea of what is it? Energy can't be like, created or destroyed it can only change forms we're all energy so like it has to go somewhere it has to go somewhere even if it's like residual energy like residual hauntings and stuff i'm like Mm -hmm. it just goes to show that like if you put enough energy into your daily routine every day it's just gonna keep playing like a tape and obviously i want my afterlife to not be just the same thing over and over again (laughs) but it gives credence to the idea at least in my mind but yeah agree Well, do you have any last um, parting stories that you want to share? I could probably do, like, one smaller one while we're kind of on the topic of, you know, (laughs) 
as morbid as it sounds, death. Um, (laughs) That's what this is all about. Right. Uh, So my grandma and I, like, not and I, my grandma, when she was in her, like, later years starting to decline, she lived with me and my mom and my dad. Um, And towards the end of her time with us, she had dementia, we think. Um, She never was, like, formally diagnosed with it, which is really sad, but towards the end of her time with us, she started like pointing out just very weird things in our house. And it was always, she's, she was Japanese. So she kept like saying like, for lack of better wording, like Japanese people everywhere in our home and like interacting with them. And I don't know if it was like the dementia, but, or if it was like truly just like, because they say your ancestors like come and and stay with you when it's getting close to your time, which is also super comforting but and I hope that's the case because me too (laughs) you know I mean like she was surrounded by everybody that we love when she (laughs) went but she I hope I hope someone was there with her to like kind of take her hand but I'd say the last like two or three years that she was with us she there was one occasion where she was sitting in her den which was like different from like our living room or whatever um and my mom goes in there to check on her and she's like smiling and like giggling my mom's like what's going on like do you need anything like can I help you like because you know Mm -hmm. she's kind of like acting different than my mom was expecting to find her which was just watching tv and she was like oh there's like two little boys playing over there and my mom was like no there's not (laughs) and she's like yes there is they're right there and my mom's like okay well do you need anything or do they need anything? And she's like, no. And so she, my mom's like, all right. And like walks back into the kitchen and she was like, Courtney, <laughs> I think yeah. there's, there's something in there with oh Taki, which is her, her middle name was Taki Uchi, but we called her Taki. Oh um, so, so I like go in there and I'm like, hi, Taki, like, are you okay? And like, can I like, you know, come and watch TV with you. And she's like, where did they go? And I was like, where did who go? And he's like, the little boys that were with me. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, grandma, please. That's, oh I mean, like, gives me chills. there's something about ghost kids that is like worse. If you've listened to our first episode, it is all yeah. about creepy children. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it hits different, man. I don't know. It does. It's like, come and, play with us. Yeah. It's <laughs> either like, because I don't know if you've heard this, but I've heard, like, when you do pass, sometimes if you do come back to, you know, show yourself to somebody or whatever, you come back as, um, like, the most happiest time of your life when you were right. alive. So maybe it could be one of her ancestors, but they were children, and that was when they were the most happiest. Yeah. I like to think maybe that's what it was. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, if that's, like... When you're the most happy, or maybe that's like how she knew them. Like, what if it or, was yeah. like a cousin from when she was like a kid, and they, as yeah. they got older, they may have lost touch because she was born in Japan, and after the Second World War, she moved to the United mm-hmm. States. Gotcha. Um, but her family remained there, so it's possible that like maybe that's just how yeah. she knew them in her life was as a kid. Um, I love those stories. But yeah, it's. I feel like it's comforting just it is to know that maybe there's somebody there waiting for you when yeah. you cross over but yeah I would <laughs> I have so many and we can maybe do this again we definitely will have to connect again and chat yeah. some more but it was yeah, so was fun having blast. you on yeah, yeah absolutely thank you guys for having me and and like I said don't take rocks from strange caves because <laughs> um, I mean uh, caves do what in you general want, but... Just maybe don't even go in caves. Yeah. I don't know. If our most recent episode, what we talked about caves, and I right. Oh, we're saying like tie a rope to your like yeah <laughs> to yourself so no <laughs> one gets lost. Yeah, I am so claustrophobic. I can't even begin to think about that. that makes I don't me... know what movie it is, but avoid at all costs. Cause it's <laughs> frightening. <laughs> Not don't for the ghosts, but just the sheer like yeah closeness of the rocks around you in a cave is like Ugh. But, yeah. and, the, and you don't you can't see very well in there and it's damp and, and just, cold yeah mm-hmm. just avoid it at all costs <laughs> yeah you can research the story of the bell witch cave and not go yeah strongly recommend that actually yeah. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have to read up some more on it. I do when you started talking about it more. I do, I do remember hearing yeah. it. So I feel I'll like a lot of your it. listeners probably know it too. So I mean, for longevity as well as just to not like bore you with yeah. the story you've heard, but. In the event that, like, you know, people reach out and say that you want to do, like, they want to hear the story, it really is worth, like, looking into. Yeah, uh, I'll have to. Because it's it just... sound interesting. It's, like, wild. And the thing is, too, is... Oh, I forgot to mention, like, apparently Andrew Jackson, like, went to, like, heard about it because he was living in Nashville at the time. And he heard about it and he was like, no way. So he gets, like, on a wagon with, with like, a posse of people, rides out to the property, like, the Bell property, and... I don't think they document like what happened that night, but he literally ran from the property in the middle of the night because Ugh. he was that terrified. Well, and I, I took see. a rock from them. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It makes oh, a good story. I wonder how many people, like how often they get mail saying like. <laughs> probably quite often. Probably at once. I mean, day. I bet you could call and just be like, how often do you think? Cause they're pretty that's open. Good. Obviously yeah. that's their whole business is. Yeah you know, talking about the history of the property and showing people the cave that she's, like, supposedly residing in, so I'm you could probably just call and more. ask. Yeah, I'll call. I'll let you guys know. It. Yeah, let us know what they say. <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming. It was so fun to chat with you and to meet yeah. you, and I'll yeah, put all your you um, having me. podcast information and Instagram stuff in our show notes so everybody Sweet. can check you out, but... Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And that just thank so you guys fun. for having me. This was so fun. Yeah. Oh, of course. We love it to network. Fun. We'll, we'll have to. T- yeah, sorry, Jessica. I keep talking over you. <laughs> 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 we love to network and, and talk to new people. So. Oh, for sure. That's yeah. Fun. We'll check in. We'll keep you guys yeah. in the loop on, on how things are going, especially yeah. with this crazy year. But for we'll now, I really follow. appreciate you guys <laughs> listening to my outlandish story i promise every word of it's oh, no. true it's just I like i loved it absolutely that's the stuff i, I, I want to hear i mean that is yeah. a, that is the reason why i do this podcast exactly yeah. i mean and it i mean it just goes to show that like maybe mm-hmm. like the document or the i think they like published it in like a pamphlet is what they called it but like maybe what yeah. they said is true because to be honest mm-hmm. i didn't believe it 100 percent before i went so right Ugh. yeah and I'm a huge skeptic, and even I believe it. I mean, yeah. your story makes me a believer. Which it's is... just weird. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's <Yes>. interesting. <laughs> I loved it. Every second of it. Well, awesome. thank you, guys. I really appreciate <laughs> it. And, and hopefully we can do this again, maybe on my podcast yeah. or something. But Yeah. That'd be awesome. yeah. Like I haven't to. worked out the kinks of how to, like, do that with a narrative podcast, <laughs> but I will let you guys know. <laughs> let us know. Awesome. Well, bye, guys. Bye. Thanks so much. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on really quick and thank you all for listening to our episode with Courtney from the podcast Haunts. I'll leave her info in the show notes, um, but make sure to give her podcast a listen. It's very well done and definitely spooky and interesting. Um, I did want to mention though something spooky that happened um, while we were recording, and I'm not sure if it was just a coincidence or not, but Jessica told me after we hung up with Courtney that the whole time she was telling her story about the Bell Witch Cave, she got nauseous. Uh, heard ringing in her ear and saw floaters in her vision and then as soon as Courtney stopped talking about it everything stopped all of those symptoms stopped so I don't know might be a coincidence but Jessica's a very empathic person and picks up on energies so I'm really not that surprised but let us know what you think and if you have ever been to the Bell Witch Cave and have a story about it to share please let us know we would love to hear it But we also really would love to hear any of your creepy experiences or stories you have. Um, And you can email them to ycmopod at gmail.com. And don't forget to give us a five-star review if you like what you hear.